Hello, my name is Zach Rye with Old Man Gaming, and welcome back. Episode 3, 5 Things. Uh, we're going strong uh, in our new show. And what is this show? Well, each week we pick a different game or a different service that is either coming out or has come out. And we basic. I just go into the community, I talk to the people who play this game the most, um, and I just try and find out what they want to see in this game. Five things they want to see in this game or coming from a game coming out. So... We did State of the K3 first episode. We did Call of Duty Warzone in the second episode. So third episode, we're going to another channel favorite, and that would be Monster Hunter World 2. Now, Monster Hunter Rise is on the horizon. We kind of know everything that's going to be in that game. Uh, we know it's a Switch exclusive, but we also know that Monster Hunter World is the highest grossing game for Capcom in the entirety of Capcom's history. So... We definitely know we're going to get a sequel to that. And we want to just go ahead and speculate on what we want that sequel to include. So, without further ado, this is five things we want to see in Monster Hunter World 2. Okay, I did say that I was always going to read the comments from the previous episode if I had any, and we didn't have any. Uh, we had a good amount of views on Call of Duty Warzone, but I'm guessing they either didn't, uh, they either completely agreed with me, didn't have anything to add, and I'm just going to assume that that's uh, what they what they did, and then that they were the most positive people ever who watched it. Um, in any case, uh, so we're going to just go right into the business today, and that's Monster Hunter World 2. Look, Monster Hunter Rise is on the horizon. It's coming out March 26th. There's a free demo, or there was a free demo out there to play. A lot of people played it. I played it. I'm a little bit lukewarm on it, but still, it's got a lot of people excited. Uh, but I'll tell you what it does have me excited for is Monster Hunter World 2, whenever that comes, because we know that... Monster Hunter Rise is a Nintendo Switch exclusive, uh, so we know that they've probably been working on Monster Hunter World for some time, and if you listen to the podcast on this channel, a little cross-parody there, uh, I predicted that Monster Hunter World 2 would get announced this year, so... Uh, I just want to go ahead and speculate. Uh, so I went into the community. I asked some people uh, who I know to be big Monster Hunter fans and Monster Hunter World players. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and get into this. And just one final disclaimer before I actually start giving out the numbers. Uh, there is no specific order to these. I just basically say them in the list that I wrote them down. It's not one is more important than the other. All five of these things are just five things we want to see, basically. And I really had fun talking to some community members about this. I got a good mix of uh, both technical things they want to see changed as well as fun stuff that uh, we want to see added in the next one. And honestly, a couple of these I put in there because, you know, it's good to be the guy who makes the show. So, number one, and that would be a fully connected map. So... Uh, what do I mean by this? Uh, and this has actually been alluded to by the creator of the game and the main, the the creative director of Monster Hunter, of uh, Monster Hunter in, it, in its entirely. He actually said that Monster Hunter World was the closest they've ever gotten to creating his vision. And one of his visions has been a kind of a connected map. Now, to explain what I'm talking about, when you play Monster Hunter World for the layman's, uh, you jack into a map. Uh, whenever you're going on to a hunt. So you would go into the ancient jungle. And it's a large map completely open to itself, but it's not really open world in the way that you can't walk from the ancient jungle into like the desert area and then into the snow area. And don't get me wrong, there are hints about this too. Uh, Iceborne's Endgame, the Guiding Lands, has basically one map that's kind of condensed all the versions of all the other maps into it. It's its own thing, but you can walk into kind of a desert area, to a jungle area, to a snow area, and so on and so forth, and you just spend time there hunting. Um, the Guiding Lands is an incredibly dynamic and cool endgame, and an interesting thing, at least in my opinion, to do and play after the game's end. It also makes expedition expeditions fun which while i always enjoyed expeditions just getting to learn my surroundings and stuff most of the monster monster hunter world pe players didn't really do that much expeditions unless they had to they just went on the hunts and killed the monster and dealt with stuff that popped up as they went along what i'd like to see is i'd like to see a fully realized open world map i'd like to see all the places interconnected and i'd like to see it so that you can literally walk from the ancient forest into the wild spire waste into whatever's next 
chest and just keep on going and monsters will spawn there as you go into the next area i'd like this for a myriad of reasons if you go on those whole f on those out the farming stuff for like minerals and bones you can just move to the next one and just keep going instead of going back to the base then loading back into a different map and i know it sounds like it's kind of big and over the top for a monster hunter game but honestly one of the things that monster hunter has done so well is they have kind of a lower level of graphics and a lower level of resolution. It still looks beautiful. Game still looks pretty as hell, but it doesn't require as much as some of the more photorealistic games out there now. And I would like, it's one of the ways that they can put these games out and the gigabytes are never take so much. You know, these aren't huge games either. So I'd like them to take some of the processing power of this next generation and instead of putting it into that graphics, into making it prettier, because I think it's pretty enough, put it into this, put it into this like, hugely connected interconnected world and man would that get my blood pumping with the fun one down let's go ahead and get into a technical one uh and this one uh was submitted by kev too tall uh he actually submitted a couple that i really liked um and uh, this one is a 30 second revive window you know kind of like your shooters your uh, Rainbow Six Siege or your Call of Duties where if you're playing in a team you go down but you don't just die uh, you actually have like a, a window where you're bleeding out and your friends can actually pick you back up and get you back into the fight in Monster Hunter Monster Hunter has always been a very tough very unforgiving game and when you go down you get carted all the way back to the nearest camp um, having to kind of start from scratch while your friends are still out there fighting uh, and it takes you a while to get back in that fight you also are followed around by these companions, and now in Rise you have two companions. Uh, so an even bigger addition would be them being able to revive you in this window should the right um, circumstances arise. And yes, I know in Iceborne they did add one of the Palico gadgets had like a revive system. Um, but still it was a gadget. You had to take up an entire slot for it. If it didn't really help your build for the specific monster, you didn't have it. Whereas this would be a little bit more open-ended. You've got that 30 seconds to bleed out. And if somebody can get to you and pick you up, you're back in the fight. I think this is a really interesting narrative. And while Monster Hunter has taken a little bit of flack for being for slowly getting easier and easier over the years, I still think this would be a lot of fun in the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. And one thing that, uh, if I have any downside of Monster Hunter, it, it really likes to take you out of the action uh, in times when you want to stay in it. So this would kind of fight back against that. So I think it's a good idea, and it's on the list. Number three is another fan-selected uh, one. Not just fan, but foundation-selected one that I really enjoyed. Um, and this comes from philbilly 330 We actually did a little show together. If you guys want to go into the histories, and that's On the Hunt, where we did a little co-opetition with the entirety of Monster Hunter Iceborne. It's a lot of fun. Check it out if you're bored. Um, in any case, you can tell that he's played the game a lot. One thing Phil Billy loves, he is the build master general on this channel. He likes builds. He likes playing with builds. He likes getting good build metas so one thing he wants to see is a way to either put a charm or an item or something that you can collect to give to allow you to have the three piece armor set bonus with only having two pieces of armor and i am definitely not how i'm going to know how i'm going to number or name this up in the little screen up at the top but basically for layman's a lot of the armor sets have these like if you have three or more pieces of armor on of this same set then you get this extra additional bonus that tends to work into a lot of people's builds all things be told though you have to have like there's only four pieces of armor to have on so if you have to have three sets of pieces of of one monster's armor that only leaves you the freedom on that third piece so what he would like to do is find some item or some addition that you could add there would obviously be a balance you'd have to have this item equipped somewhere or maybe a charm or something along those lines uh, that allows you to give you that extra bonus uh, with only two pieces of armor instead of three this would really allow the build to kind of open up and allow you to really play with some of the stuff that you can do um, and honestly let's face it the build is a lot of fun in this game and i'm not a huge build guy and i love the building in this game it's it's a lot of fun uh so that would give you a lot more options a lot more freedom and uh, for the tinkers they can spend a lot more time on it 
Number four is a technical one, and it is coming from me. And it is my biggest complaint about Monster Hunter World. Okay, so... First of all, I do want to say I never played any Monster Hunter games before Monster Hunter World. I came into Monster Hunter first, and I love Monster Hunter World for many, 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 many different reasons. Uh, many reasons that I don't necessarily think I would like some of the other Monster Hunters, especially after playing Rise and seeing that in some ways it went back to some of the older systems. Um, that being said, uh, there is one thing that uh, is just, just unattainable in it, and that is there is no cross-platform saves. So four, I want cross-platform saves. I'd love cross-platform play too, but if I, but I think every game should have cross-platform play. So if I use that as a numbering system, that would be in every five things we ever do that doesn't already have it. So that aside, uh, one of the things that bothers me is I have over 300 hours in this game. I have played four different characters. One of them I deleted with over 60 hours, um, and. All three of them have over 100 hours. One of them actually has over 200, almost 300 hours into it. I have tons of work, time, and investment in this game. And all of that is done on Xbox One. And don't get me wrong. I love Xbox One. It's a great system. But anybody who's followed the channel for any period of time knows I've transferred to PC uh, towards late of last year. I would be willing to actually buy the game all over again on my PC... If I could get those saves, but I'm not. I'm not able to get those saves, which keeps me from getting it on on PC, which keeps me from playing it because I've migrated to playing on my PC mostly. That's just a bummer. I want this to have more of a wider range. I want it to have those cross-platform saves, at least with PC and whatever thing you're playing it on. I think that is... We just need that. We need that. It's it's 2021. It's time to get with the times. We need cross-platform saves, especially on these games with huge tail ends where you're encouraged to play it in multiple places. All right, number five. Let's end on a fun one, guys. Um, more weapons, right? More weapons. Now, listen, if you're not a Monster Hunter World player, first of all, I urge you to play it and try to get through the tutorial because if you do, you're going to be in love with that game. In any case, there are 14 weapons in the game, and one of the best parts about this game is every one of those weapons changes the entirety of how you play the game. I've never seen a game do this, personally, uh, where it literally changes the button mapping. It changes the entirety of how you play the game when you switch from one weapon to another, which gives this game so much replayability. There is just so, like, when you if you play th Longsword, that's great. You can literally play through the whole game with another weapon, and it's a completely different game on a fundamental system level. I mean, not the story. It's the same. But, I mean, on a fundamental system level, it is completely different how you have to hunt how you have to fight, and hell, how you have to press the buttons. They do different things for every weapon, and that's just crazy. But it's also cool. It's also incredibly dynamic, and it's also a treasure trove of replayability. One thing I love, too, is that there's 14 weapons, which is great. It's huge. It's awesome. And I should not be asking for more, but let's face it, that's what we want in the world is more of the stuff we love. So I want more. I want more weapons. I want more options, even more replayability, even more ways to change dynamically the game. And this came from a lot of people. So I am just going to go ahead and tell you guys the three main weapons we want to see in the next one. Just give you a quick description. And I just put it all into one. Uh, the first one, we want a faster style of gun. Yes, the light blow gun fires fa bow gun fires fast, fast. However, while it's kind of like a burst rifle, but only barely, it's still pretty slow in comparison to most firearms in games on a whole period. And I know that you don't want the game to be broken, but the three ranged weapons that you have in the game are really cool but honestly that's one of the biggest areas you could expound on there's really not a ton of ranged weapons in this game there are 14 weapons in the game they are all melee except for bow light bow gun and heavy bow gun so there's room for additions here what i'd like to see added and also a couple other people would like to see added is 
a dual blade equivalent of guns. Almost like take a page out of Dauntless's book. Give us some dual pistols. Real fast firing but low damage uh, with a high versatility and a high movement rate. I would love to see that, even more so than the, you know, light bow gun. You could even do something crazy and do some, some sort of, like, mount build with it. That would make it really fun and interesting in the moment. I would love to see that. Uh, so that's weapon number one. Weapon number two, we want a spear or a pike. Like, don't get me wrong. The lance is great, and the insect glaive is awesome. But the insect glaive is not really a polearm. I mean, it is, technically, and this is coming from a dude who plays the insect glaive. But it's not like the traditional polearm, which is poke at something from a distance. Kind of lance and gun lance fit that a little bit. But I feel like there is room for impairment with like a slightly longer range, lower damage, faster version of those weapons, which gives you more versatility and a lot of speed. So like a pike or spear, a large pike or spear to do kind of quick jabs and quick evasions and rolls. That would make things really interesting and that can give you a little bit more versatility in those kinds of weapons. And then finally, this is mine. We're never going to see it in this one, but I've always wanted this. I want an anchor weapon. I know that sounds crazy, but I want like a big, like, big sword axe or even a or even an anchor would work a uh, weapon with just a huge massive chain on it what i want it to be able to do is literally entangle parts of the monster's body if you hit them in the right time or you hit them in the right spots and that way you can actually hold them in place for other hunters to wail on them reduce their movement so that you can get better shots at them get knockdowns send them into walls stuff like that i think that would be just such a cool weapon be a great support weapon. It'd be a really fun weapon to play by yourself because you'd really have to think about how and when you use the entangles and when you go in hard. I think that would be a really cool weapon to have. So those are our three favorite picks for new weapons, but we just want to see new weapons. I mean, give us 20. I don't care. We love the weapons in this game. I love the weapon systems in this game. They're always interesting and unique. We want to see more of them. So that's all five. That's our five things. We want to see a Monster Hunter World uh, too. And I just want to say personally, I would have to say of all the games I've played in my 39 years of life, this game I have played the most. And it is, I would say, a perfect game. Near perfect. Like, for what it was and what it was at the time, like, yes, it can be improved on, but it was exactly what it had to be. I would not have changed a thing about Monster Hunter World. I would have added to it, as I've said here. I got to be honest, even coming up with these five was a little bit difficult for me. I'm glad that the community showed up and gave me some ideas because really I didn't have a whole ton because I loved that original game just so much. There is something beautiful about Monster Hunter. Uh, not just the way that the world interacts, not just the way you interact with the world, but the way the world interacts with itself. And that's what makes you feel like you're a part of it and that's what makes it so great and so rewarding to go into it and do what you've got to do so that's it that's what we want to see uh five things from monster hunter world we don't know what we're going to do for the next one i'm not sure yet but i'll let you guys know on the discord when i know and uh other than that you can join the discord it's in the link below you can contact us on Facebook at Old Man Gaming DH, on Twitter at Old Man Gaming 9. Please click like, please click subscribe. And of course, as long as you guys keep watching and listening, we will keep making it. We'll see you guys next time.